For the next one week, I'm going to be ditching my iPhone for a Windows phone. This is the worst thing I've done to myself. Now you might be wondering, why would anyone still use a Windows phone in 2023? Apparently some people still use one, but why? That's exactly what I wanted to find out. I got my hands on a Lumia 950, which was released way back in 2015. And my goal is to see if I can use this phone to do my everyday tasks. But before that, I'll answer the big question. What on earth is a Windows phone? This was Microsoft's answer to iOS and Android. Windows Phone looked radically different compared to anything out there at that time. It was faster, it was way more fluid compared to Android. It had these dynamic icons called as live tiles which showed you important info at a glance. Plus, it gave the home screen a much more personalized feel as compared to a stack of icons. The entire design language of Windows Phone was truly ahead of its time and it shaped up to being the next big thing in the smartphone space. But. Microsoft was pretty late to the party. At the time Windows Phone was announced, Apple was already on their fourth iPhone. Android was flourishing with phones from Samsung, LG, HTC and Blackberry was still dominating the market for business customers. However, Microsoft partnered up with Nokia to build phones running Windows Phone. And that worked out really well for them. They made a lot of head turner phones like the Lumia 1020, a phone with a 41 megapixel camera which at that time was unheard of. But by 2014, Microsoft ended up buying the smartphone device of Nokia to build Microsoft branded phones so that they could have the same level of control Apple had. Despite all this, Windows Phone was truly dead on arrival. Unlike its bigger brother Windows, app makers did not see Windows Phone as a profitable platform, which meant that many popular apps were either missing new updates or were completely not there in the store. Eventually, in 2017, Microsoft admitted that Windows Phone was dead and stopped building features for it. Uh, we Which brings me to the Lumia 950, the last flagship from Microsoft. This phone was the prime example of what Microsoft wanted a phone to be. Windows Phone was not that bad as you think, and that's why I'm going to be using this for a week to show you how the experience is compared to Android and iOS. Why am I doing this to myself? Day 1. I started the challenge with setting the phone up, which took about 15 minutes. It let me log into my Microsoft account and it installed the apps and updates. After all that was done, I was at the home screen. I needed my contacts over, so I tried logging into my Google account, but it threw an error right away, so I guess I have to figure out another way. The rules for this challenge are simple. I should not use my iPhone, but I can still use my MacBook since it's the only computer I have. So I got over to my Mac, went to Google Contacts, exported my contacts, transferred them over to the phone, and I finally got my contacts. It's 10 a.m. and I have to get going to my university, so I'll finish setting up the rest of the phone during my classes, because quite honestly, I won't be listening to them either ways. I checked out the Microsoft Store to find and install a few apps that I could use this week. The store literally had about 200 apps. Most of them were knockoff apps and games, so I didn't even bother with it. Forget any of the social or productivity apps that I use on a daily basis. So I started customizing the phone instead because that seems interesting. Yeah, I think this is gonna be my new setup for the week. Now I thought I could use Instagram and Twitter through Microsoft Edge. Yes. Microsoft Edge. But it turns out both of them do not support this version of it anymore. YouTube still works, it's slow and very hard to use for some reason, but I can watch Rick Astley vibe. Since Instagram doesn't work, my only way of texting people is gonna be through SMS. Who still uses SMS? Anyways, the walk back from uni was quite boring because I don't have any music stored locally and I doubt if I can get any music service working on this. Day 1 was pretty rocky. I'm missing some of the apps I would use on a daily basis but we'll see how it goes. I want to touch a bit on this design. It is as big as the iPhone 13 Pro except that it's built out of plastic. At first I thought it would feel cheap but to my surprise it feels really good on the hands. There's one thing that I'm really excited about and it's this dedicated shirt a button. This phone's going to be a lot of fun to take photos with. Day 2. I started by picking up my phone. Ahem. Win Windows phone and one thing that felt refreshing was I did not doom scroll Twitter or Instagram in my bed. I read some news from the Microsoft News app and went on with using it. I still haven't figured a way out to listen to music but if I could play videos from YouTube and not lock the phone in my pocket and still technically listening to music. It's a very janky solution but it is what it is. And also if you're wondering, the AirPods do work with it. So instead of doing nothing, I started changing up a few settings on the phone. This phone has something that's quite similar to Face ID. It's called Windows Hello except that it scans your iris to unlock the phone. Apparently the feature is still in beta. The setup process took a while where I had to hold the phone up in this awkward position. It works but it takes a long time to recognize your eyes and most of the times it just fails. I tried using Notion through Microsoft Edge but I was stuck forever in the loading page until I gave up. So for this week I switched to Microsoft Word as my note taking app because it natively runs on the phone and I still can sync my documents to my Mac. I spent most of my day outside today and I got to notice a couple of things with this phone. The phone restarts itself out of nowhere. It started three times already and one of them was when I was in a call. The speaker is at the back for some reason and every time you use the phone you're gonna end up covering it. There is one. Two, 
3. Full microphone around the phone and the audio quality in a phone call is pretty mediocre. Anyways, this is the end of day 2. I still miss my iPhone but hey look, I'm good. I can do this. This is better than I expected it to be. Day 3. I asked a few of my friends what they think about Windows phones and this is what they said. What do you think about this phone? What do you think about this phone? What do you want Really nice. It has a very good UI, I mean, it's different from the conventionally used ones like Android and so yeah. It's a very good phone. Okay. I have to, I have to say. Um, I'll break it down for you. The queen died after using this phone. It, it actually has no apps. It has no apps. There's no Snapchat, there's no, you know, there's no Instagram, there's no WhatsApp, there's nothing. What are you doing? Um, you're reviewing the phone. This guy is such a troll. Okay, there is no apps on the phone. There's no Instagram, there's no WhatsApp, there's no Twitter, there's nothing. There's no YouTube as well. Uh, what? Like, I, I just feel like, I mean, for what it is, I mean, it's definitely both. Wait, it. how much is it record? I see that there are no app, apps here. Okay. Can I download any? No. <laughs> Bumble? No! The camera's pretty okay. Okay. And then the look wise is pretty good also. Okay. It's very interesting image quality. Very interesting? Very interesting. Okay. I don't know how the camera is able to pull this off, but wait, 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 wait. What oh, are you going to do now? <laughs> oh no! Yeah, that's the best way to test the optical stabilization. What do you think about the home screen? This is the home screen? Yeah. Wait, wait. Oh, did you come on. It's amazing. I mean... It's amazing. Why do yeah, you think it's amazing? No exact wallpaper. Oh, there is a wallpaper. But it's actually a really good phone. It's really light. So you have an iPhone 13? Yeah. Would you leave this phone for that? Definitely. Yeah, that's quite obvious from his impressions. So you use an iPhone 14 Pro Max. Yeah. Would you switch from this phone to that? Dude, I paid like a lakh for that. I don't think I'm gonna switch like ever. So you have the OnePlus 11R. Would you throw this phone away? For a Lumia? Um, keep it. You know what? I just might in case I get so. Wink, wink, you know what? It becomes an actual OnePlus. <laughs> That's what he means. <laughs> <laughs> it ends up being an actual OnePlus. <laughs> the weather. The weather. Okay. <laughs> okay, man, enough. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, I should not give this guy the phone. Day 4. So far, I've only talked about how I've tried making Windows Phone useful. But I haven't really talked about what made it special. So I'm going to be walking you through 5 features that made Windows Phone unique. It's worth knowing many of these features have been copied by Android and iOS in some form or the other. For example, Lifetelt is very similar in concept to widgets. But over here, these were your app icons. Every app icon was a Lifetelt. You could make it as big or as small as you want it to be. You were not limited to a set of widgets. Any app could behave like a widget and provide important info. This really made the notification panel on Windows Phone irrelevant. Windows Phone also did customization well. You could customize the accent color, theme, and this extends towards all the apps on the phone so that every app felt consistent. This is very similar in concept to what Google has been doing with Material U on Android, and it seems to be working well for them. The next feature is the People Hub. It was your all in one contact app that put all your social app updates and posts into this one app. All you really had to do was look up that person's name and you would see their latest Instagram post post, recent tweets and even their Facebook updates. I can't really show you how it works because there are no social apps that support it anymore. Windows Phone is dead. The keyboard on Windows Phone is just amazing. There's proper spacing between each key. I felt I typed faster with it, even one-handed, and if I did make a mistake, there was this handy-dandy nib which let me move around quickly. And there's this weird feature which let you lift the keyboard from the bottom so you could move it around. Why would you do that? Lastly, Windows Phones were the first ones to implement an always-on display, and only very recently a company that goes by the name of a fruit implemented it. This phone is really fluid and smooth. The animations and transitions are really well done and the overall performance is excellent. The battery life has been pretty amazing for the last 3 days. I charged it at the beginning of the day to 100 and I end up with about 35 or 40. Anyways, I still have another 3 days to go. Windows phone is not bad. It's just a different experience and I kind of like it. Day 5. Ever since the start of this challenge, I've been really interested and excited to test this camera system out because Windows phones are known for their amazing cameras. The Lumia 950 has a 20 megapixel f1.9 optical stabilized camera and it's called by Carl Zeiss lens to prevent chromatic aberrations. The camera interface is actually amazing. It looks pretty bare bones right, you have your few controls and the shutter button. But with the swipe, you get pro controls like shutter speed, ISO and white balance. Remember the shutter button I talked about earlier? It quickly launches the camera and snaps a photo. I gotta say that I enjoyed taking these photos, the quality of them is nothing to brag about. It does a decent job and doesn't do any sort of post-processing. Everything looks real and washed out. 
especially at low light. But comparing this to something like the iPhone 6s, yeah, this is miles better. On the video side, the colors just look fine and white balance is off the roof. The selfie camera is just bad. This camera truly impressed me for its age. It was a lot of fun taking those photos. Maybe I'll keep this phone around just for its camera. Day 6. There's one feature that I've not mentioned yet since the beginning of this video and this feature is the reason why Microsoft believed this phone would do really well. If you connect up a monitor and a keyboard through a USB-C dock to this phone, you can run a stripped down version of Windows 10. What? Microsoft called this feature continuum where it allowed you to get a full desktop-like experience through your phone. You could use the apps that exist on your phone as if they were full-blown desktop apps and you could use the same shortcuts you would use on a PC running Windows. I wouldn't say this was a unique idea by Microsoft as companies like Asus and Motorola tried something like this in the early 2010s. Microsoft did a better job and Continuum could have easily replaced laptops. But why didn't anyone use it? Well, the whole thing was pretty slow to use, there weren't many apps that supported it and it isn't full-blown Windows so you can't use proper desktop apps like Premiere Pro and Microsoft just abandoned the whole idea later on. In 2017, Samsung copied that idea entirely and made Samsung Dex. It was fast and ran Android, which meant you could use any Android app in desktop view. And some people do use it as a laptop replacement, but it's still not going to kill laptops any day. This feature was truly way ahead of its time, and if it did pan out, it would have changed phones forever. This is the end of day 6, and I think I've made up my mind about Windows phones. The final day. You know, the more I think about it, the more I put the pieces together, I really do feel that Microsoft missed their mark with Windows phones. Instead of pushing Windows phone as an option, for everyone, Microsoft could have targeted just a business market. The office suite works very well on this phone and it could become a computer on the go with Continuum. Microsoft could have easily built an ecosystem around it. Windows is the most used operating system and if it played well with Windows phones, these would have sold like hotcakes. While obviously the lack of third-party apps defeats the purpose of it even being a phone, it didn't really stop me from working. I could still read emails, I made Word documents on the go, I could almost do everything I do on my iPhone. Except for using apps. Sure, the way I did things were rather very unconventional for me, but it got the job done. As a casual user, I did find Windows Phone easy to use and for its time, it's way better than Android and iOS in terms of functionality. Personally, I felt refreshed using this phone for the past one week. But I'm also happy I can finally say goodbye to this phone. It was kind of disastrous to use it. Should anyone buy this phone? No!